everyone, got a new movie for you today. It's called Beneath. It just came out, and it was produced by Chiller Studios, and uh, I'm sure it's going to appear on the Chiller channel at some point if it hasn't already. Um, and as far as Chiller goes, I'm just going to say this right off the bat. This film is like an Academy Award winner compared to the rest of the films they've come out with, at least that I've seen. Um, so Beneath, uh, directed by Larry Fesden, and if you don't know who he is, I, he was also in the movie I just reviewed, Jug Face. Comes in a lot of low-budget horror movies as an actor, and he's also a director. And, you know, he's, like, involved in every part of the filmmaking. But he's directed a couple films, Habit and Wendigo are the only two I've seen. I don't remember liking Wendigo. I remember liking Habit a little better. It's been a long time. Whatever. But this is his newest film, Beneath. Uh, he directed it. And really, all the credit um, of this film being somewhat successful goes to him because he turned something that should have been just a cheesy C-rate movie into something that's a good cheesy C-rate movie. I mean... It doesn't take itself too seriously at all, and that's key to its success. Let me get to the basic story. A uh, very simple story. Um, did I say Barry? God. Very simple story. Six friends supposedly just getting out of high school, even though they look older, which is, you know, consistent with most bad horror movies. Um, they go to the woods for, um, you know, their final fling before, you know, going on with their lives. And they wind up basically stuck in a rowboat in the middle of this lake with a killer catfish swimming around them. <laughs> Yeah, a killer catfish. Um, yeah, don't shut me off here. Basically, it's better than it sounds. The whole tone of this film is kind of this retro. It has a slightly throwback feel, while not really being blatantly like that. Um, just the soundtrack kind of reminded me of an older film. And once they get rid of the, you know, give the excuse for the cell phone not to work, basically, you it could be any era. So they get stuck on this boat, and the beginning of the film is this crazy catfish, and it's all practical effects. And it's basically sort of like Larry Fesden's love letter, I'm sure, to Jaws, kind of with like a slightly cheesy note. But the fish is kind of cool looking. At first, I was expecting just something completely CGI and cheesy. At first, it kind of just looks like a real fish does when they come out and get shit out of the water, not moving super fast and stuff. And that part actually looked kind of creepy. After a while, um, and I'll say I read one review where they mentioned this, I agree with it totally. The you kind of become sympathetic with the way the fish looks a little. The reviewer referred to it as cuddly. I don't know if it was cuddly, but it did look kind of sympathetic after a while. And as you find out more about the people in the boat, that's where um, the term beneath really is like the metaphor for. You know, besides the fish swimming beneath the water, the, it's really what's beneath these people, the surface of the way they act. Because at the end, they all have to turn on each other to kind of survive this fish uh, the begin, like I said, the beginning of the movie is them acting all stupid, doing the typical acting the stupid tropes out that you would see in a normal horror movie. Um, one guy's a jock, one guy's a nerd, whatever. You know, the pretty girl. And they do all the stupid stuff. And then the second half, it kind of switches gears, and it gets a little more serious, and you start seeing what's really under the skin of these people, and they all start turning each other. And You know, there's, it's really simple. They keep it all in the boat the whole movie, and... There's a little bit of another thing about the direction. There's some pretty cool little camera things that they do, um, like some overhead shots of the boat I thought were really effective, um, just so you can see the fish swimming and stuff. And it, I don't know how they did the effects on the fish. Maybe in the DVD you can see it. But it, it at times it did look cheesy. Don't expect something great. But it looks like a catfish version of Jaws, sort of. Um, that's the best way to say it, and I think that's what they were going for. Uh, they certainly succeeded. At, at times it does look cheesy and fake, just like Jaws did. Um... But yeah, I mean, don't expect anything great, but the second part of the film, it totally switches gears. Um, and then the final part of the film, I thought was really cool, just took it up another notch. Um, you know, I still think it's an average film when you hold it against, like, big, you know, feature films and stuff. Um, so I'll give it a three out of five. But for Chiller, it's like their Academy Award winner. And I'm definitely, if you're like me, you know, just chilling at home one day and you want to watch something kind of cool little, you know, switch up on the monster twist. Um, well, it's not really switch up on the monster twist. It's just a really good mo little monster story. Um, yeah, check it out. Beneath, three out of five uh, with a recommendation, definitely. Larry Fezzin, he's weird, but uh, he did a lot, you know, he, he made something that's probably bigger than the sum of its parts. Definitely. All right, guys, uh, I rambled on for a little bit, so I'll see you soon. And check out my review for Jugface. Um, Larry Fezzin plays the dad.